for a bit. No, that's Jamie. good. It's good. It's all part of the improv. Hey, Justin, I was just saying that I just want to hear your accent. <laughs> that's it. Okay, did well, you watch the royal wedding, by the I way? Did you? You know that my two of my sisters live there. Oh really? So did they, they, they didn't camp out that night? Uh, hell they? yeah, we are did Mexicans. They? We do that. Whoa! So they have pictures very close. No, seriously. The, yeah, and they have a video and everything. So I was Fantastic. like, that they took with their iPhone. Wow. Um, so well, what bit were they on? Were they on where for the kiss at the end, or were they on the? They were the uh, in the street, but one of my one of their friends was in the street, and the other went close to the balcony. So they switched places. Oh. Wow. They were smart. Hey, great. So I feel so close to the Did you see them? Did you catch them on the TV? Uh, no. I was no. not going to wake up at 4.30 oh, in the no. morning to watch it, so no. <laughs> a lot of Americans did. <laughs> did. you see them in Times Square? They were all watching it in Times Square. It was great. I know. Um, I, was, uh, I was so sad that I couldn't watch the movie, but I watched the trailer and I read all the hypnosis and I just think that it's a beautiful, beautiful story. But I want to know, did you look for the script or the script look for you? Oh. Um, well, I, I had, the script was sent to me, um, and it was quite, I mean, the basic storyline was there, but the, the really, the, when I kind of first kind of really wanted to do it was that the BBC sent me to meet the man that was based on Kamani Maruge, who by then was like 89, and... He was, he was in a hospice in Nairobi, he was uh, very ill, and I went to meet him, and he just, we really, we just started to talk, and we really got on, and um, I, at the end of that first encounter with him, first meeting, I then phoned the BBC and said, listen, I've got to stay longer, I really, you know, this, the film is going to be, you know, revealed when I speak more to him, because I was only supposed to be there for like a few days, and then go to South Africa where, they, where everybody wanted me to shoot the film, where mm -hmm. there was more money to make the film. And, um, and so I just talked to this, this man, this amazing man, and all these themes started to emerge, like the relationship he had with his wife, the relationship he had with his children, his passion for learning. But then this kind of whole backstory, which was the unknown story about Kenya and mm -hmm. the British past, you know, the colonial past, which was not in the history books in England. and had been destroyed, the evidence had been destroyed and the records of that had been destroyed. So it was that, that kind of then I was like, yeah, I'm going to make this movie, right, now I've got the kind of, the start of uh, something really, really powerful. Did you feel a lot of pressure because it is based on a true story? You know, it's different when you come with a script that is just invented and then you create, you direct it your own way, but when it is based on a true story, does no, it think, add I pressure? Think, no, I, I think it, it, you know, at the end of it you're making a, a, a film, you know, which you, you know, audience has got to see in a cinema, you want it to be cinematic and emotionally engaging and, but, no, I, I didn't feel pressure, I thought that the fact that I was from the UK, I was, in a, I was an outsider going into that situation, that the film was essentially an uplifting film, and, you know, a film that was inspiring about one man's determination and you know the power and healing power of children and how these fantastic wonderful children that are in the film you know that the film deals with a lots of kind of dark issues that come from truth and it is about a real man but those incidents and those things kind of inspired the the way that we put the film together so a lot of things in the truth and the, the stuff that we started with the research that I kind of undercover all really helped to inform the film that we were making. It helped, you know, it really did. The music came from, traced right back to the camps, because while, you know, me as a, an English person didn't know that history, also the Kenyans didn't know that history, you know, so in that first president had said, we move on from this, you know, we move on from our past, we forget the past and we move on as a country. So a lot of the Kenyans who were kind of involved with the film, and there was a, a large Kenyan crew and cast in the film, they were learning about it as well. So they were learning about the truth, you know, of what had happened in the past. So it was useful. I thought it was a good thing. Yeah, and I guess, like, as a person, it caused you a big change in, in you, right? Yeah. Like I mean, I, I, I completely... I went into Africa thinking it was going to be one thing, and it was a completely different thing. You know, you're, we were dealing with these amazing people, amazing children. We, 
because we didn't shoot it in South Africa, we lost half of our you know budget, and and it meant that we couldn't any films because there was this perceived infrastructure in South Africa that is not perceived to be there in Kenya. Uh, because big films go into Kenya and they take everything in, people, ADs, actors, equipment, mm -hmm. uh, even the food. Whereas we didn't, because I was so determined to shoot it in Kenya, we were like, we had a very small budget. I had, I took only eight people into the country. Um, the rest of the cast and the crew were all Kenyans or Africans. And um, because of that intimacy and the, the way that we made it, I, it meant that I, drop, I thought, well, I'm going to go and drop into one community, I'm going to go to one school and cast the whole film within one school. And everybody was included, Every, no one was excluded if they wanted to be in it. So I had all these amazing children. In the, we were in the middle of the Rift Valley, there were Maasai Kikuyu children who are beautiful, beautiful children. They are absolutely... These kids were so amazing. They'd never seen a movie, they'd never seen a TV. and. Um, by the end of the film, I had all these children, everybody in the school, and their parents, and their grandparents, and the people from the village. So this whole little village, when you see the movie, you you know you, all of the adults in the film are all part of the same community. And these children would like wake up at, you know, first thing in the morning, work, think of nothing of a two-hour run or walk to school, and then they'd be there in school in this beautiful kind of part of the Rift Valley with very little resources, but these kids wanted to learn, you know, their thirst for knowledge, their thirst for learning, it really kept me on my toes and kept, you know, the film had to be done in a way that, you know, I had to have my lesson plans on the wall, I became their teacher, I had to go into the school and teach so that I could, you know, get to know them, so I became teacher Justin, and uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was inspiring, it completely changed me as a person, and because you realise, you know, we're very lucky in the West that we have free education and we take that for granted sometimes but also we have all this stuff and these kids have nothing and yet these kids were absolutely on it all the time, you know, watching, in, I'd share action, they'd look at the blackboard, they'd do all the work, by the time I shouted, they'd go, teacher Justin, teacher Justin, Mark, mark my work, as before I was going to go in and give the next note. So they thought it was all real, they didn't, they didn't understand it was... Uh, you know, a play, it was, uh, it was for them, it was all real, so they, their reactions are real, you know, so, yeah, it's good. It's wow, how beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, what are your next projects? I've just done something in the UK, using the kind of same, um, sort of the same ethos, working with, mixing actors and people that haven't acted before, non-actors, um, with this film, uh, we have this huge problem in the UK to do with child trafficking and, ch and children working within, um, you know, the manufacturing and um, basically child slavery, people brought in from other parts of the world. So I, I was intrigued by this story and how to make that as a film and so, but use the same ethos as I had in Africa with using non-actors and how do you make this story which is quite a difficult, hard-hitting story, how do you make it cinematic and kind of, you know, engaging enough for the audience so that they are, they are not, um, so that they engage and watch and kind of stay with the film. So that was, that's what I've just done, it's called Stolen, and that's, that's what I've just done, and I'm prepping with the same team that made this film, uh, the First Grader, to do a, uh, a very different departure, and a different movie altogether called Jamaica In. Oh, that's so beautiful. Mm. And um, how do you feel now that you uh, direct the boy, the other Boiling Girl? Yes. And Natalie Portman won the Oscar? So proud of her. <laughs> I'm so proud of her. And she, she deserves it, you know, because that woman is a love... I mean, she is... You, you probably love her, yeah? She, yeah, of course. Actress, yeah, and she is... She's so... She's, she's such a, a, a good person and... A, and she works so hard, she really does, you know, on, on my film, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to work with her and Scarlett, and Natalie's just such a kind of hard worker, and when I kind of saw and knew that she was doing, doing that film, you know, I knew she put her heart and soul into it, so I'm so proud of her, and I saw her, because my film went to Toronto, so she invited me over to see The Black Swan, and I was so proud of her, because she's, she's, uh, she's quite shy around, you know, the kind of whole publicity stuff, and there's a real sweet, gentle, 
very, very good quality to Natalie. She's a beautiful woman inside and out. And uh, yeah, I was very lucky to have her in my film. My first film it was really good. And she's a good woman. She deserves it, so it's great. I know. Congratulations, yeah. because now you have that in your pocket. I have a... <laughs> And and she was, she was, she was just, she was just, you know. I mean, you know, she is a fantastic, you know, from Leon, Star Wars, and all the movies that she's done, and the independent movies that she's done. I think she's really interesting. You know, she is, you know, she's a star. You know, and stars are very rare, very rare. And and but she uses that star, you know, the thing that she has there in a really good way. That she mixes the independent movies. With the bigger movies, yeah. the interesting movies, her choices are really good. She's smart, you know. She's she's a really good role model, I think, because she because she has got this intelligence about her work and her choices that she makes. But she's also intelligent about her life choices that she, you know, and she you, you don't know much about Natalie in the press. That she keeps quite a private yeah. thing, and I think that's very that's, smart. Yeah, it's really she's really dignified, and I think that's really uh, it's a real testament to her, you know. <laughs> and now she's gonna have a baby, which is great. Yeah, and she looks beautiful all, like yeah. that. So she I was did, like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> she's an example. So, uh, how long have you been here in Dallas? Did you just arrive yesterday? I, I the night before. So last night after the screening, I drove around town, went downtown, Good. saw the in the dark, in the rain, in the storm, which you got your tire done with. <laughs> I was driving around. It was a pretty rough night, wasn't it? But it was, yeah. it was amazing. No one goes out in the rain. Tell me about it. <laughs> I was it there. <laughs> Yeah, except for you, change it. I didn't see you. <laughs> that I was so bad. It was help you. <laughs> <laughs> and did you already have barbecue? Here. Okay, no. I'm gonna show that you are wearing some boots here. Good. You have to buy your cowboy boots, yeah, you know, because you are in Texas. Yeah. Well, well, not not here exactly, but here oh, in okay. Texas, yeah. Okay, buy okay, it, so. okay, yeah. Well, where's <laughs> the store? Because I just look at my hotel room, and there's just some air conditioning, and then the shopping mall. There's no cowboy boots. Uh, there's well, a special place there. Uh, there is like a lot of uh, like Western stores, you okay, know. Okay, so okay, I will give okay. you a list. Please do. On yeah. the way to the airport, because I have yeah. to leave tonight. <laughs> unfortunately, but I'd love to stay here. It's great. Ah, uh, yeah. You have to go and enjoy the food. You know that Dallas has like the most restaurants per person. Really? Yeah. So we love to eat. And I heard it was the first training post. Is this true? <laughs> I heard it was like 1849 or something. It was this first. I, I mean, that is pretty amazing. You know that that's. I guess it's near the water, so... And remember. they killed John F. Kennedy here, if, if that counts, oh, right? No, no. No, I did go past that last night. Good. I saw that. Yeah. Well, and my last thing. Yes. Since I'm from Mexico, you have to say something in Spanish. Oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? Muchas gracias. There you and, go. Uh, and uh, I have just been to Guadalajara. I'm from Guadalajara. Oh. The place of the tequila. That, um, I've been to the tequila. I, I went to tequila. It's amazing. That, I didn't realize what a kind of... I didn't realize... I mean, in England, tequila is not kind of... I, I'm going to be a convert into kind of... Because it's a real delicate drink that is being... I mean, I went to the... Is it Jose Carreras? Uh -huh, Jose Cuervo. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. I went there to the, to the factories there. What a brilliant, brilliant city Guadalajara is, isn't it? Yes. I'm so glad you oh, have been there. Oh, listen, I went there and I fell in love with there, and I was like, I don't want to do a movie there because I just thought it had such great energy. The yes, people, the people are so. And you know, hearted. and you know what is sad? I mean, I understand that Mexico is, you know, in bad situation, and 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 we are a poor country and all that stuff. But we are a beautiful country, beautiful. and sadly, in all the movies, if you really think about it, they always put Mexico like up the worst thing I in the know, world. I there know. is rich people there, you know. We we have education. But we, there we... is also joy of the people yes. and just in and in community and just you go around and you look at that country. Yes. I mean, I, you know, I was there for I was only there for a week, sadly, but I would have happily stayed, you know. And it was serious. I was serious. I was like, you know, they were talking about. You know, doing stuff, and so I went back to England, thinking, God, how can I do a film back there? That well, I would love that because the people have something really. There's a great energy with the people there, and a and a real appreciation of film. Good. Yeah. No, I love it. Now I have it on camera, so I will yeah. remind you. Yeah, in listen, a, listen, in a few Next time you meet, say what's okay. happened to my yeah, my Guadalajara movie. Exactly. <laughs> and I'll be saying the same thing. <laughs> oh, well, something will happen. Thank you so much. Pleasure. And what the hell did she say? Is very happy to have you. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.